hope you had a very Merry Christmas. And while Christmas is over, it's kind of hard for me to take down the Christmas lights. I kind of like the twinkling and the joy. And I remember when my kids were growing up, my son would put Christmas lights all throughout the house at random times of the year. Sometimes he'd leave them up all year long and I kind of like that. So <laughs> just something different and unique. Um, but what I want to talk to you about today is planning for 2022. And I want to invite you to join me on a 21 day corporate fast. This is what God has put upon my heart for 2022. And it is a 21 day fast starting January 11, going all the way through the end of January. So 21 days, you can um, pray about that. Ask God how he would like you to fast. You could do a water fast for the first three days if you want, which is what I'm going to do. Um, like a liquid fast, liquids only, and then switch over into a partial fast, maybe a Daniel fast. Um, ask the Lord what he would have you to do and then do what he says to do. Maybe you just fast one meal for 21 days or maybe you fast two meals for 21 days, whatever it is. I just want to give you a couple of pointers. Number one is if you've never fasted, you probably don't want to try a, a 21 day full on, uh, you know, no food <laughs> fast. And I don't recommend fasting with only water for 21 days. I think three days max without, you know, consulting your doctor. Um, so, and then also I want to encourage you, if you are fasting to draw closer to Christ, which is what we are doing, you must incorporate prayer and God's word. Otherwise, you're just going on a diet. We're not doing this to get into our favorite skinny jeans or the ones you wore last six months. <laughs> we are drawing closer to Christ. That is the whole purpose of this. And basically, it lines up with the word of God in being a sacrifice, uh, basically your first fruits. So... Just like you would sacrifice your tithe, giving the first 10% of your income, we are tithing to God our year, the first part of our year. And so when you sacrifice the first part of your year to God, oh, you better believe he's going to bless the rest of it. And so I want to give you a couple of scriptures that are in the Bible that kind of reference fasting and as you ask the Lord what he would have you to do, I want you to think about these scriptures. Joel chapter 2 verse 12 says, Yet even now declares the Lord, Return to me with all your heart with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. In this scripture, the Lord is beckoning. He is beckoning us return to me. So sometimes we get off the path or we get distracted by things. Things start to pull us away from Christ and it happens to everyone. So he's saying, return to me with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. And the weeping and the mourning comes because your soul gets contaminated with things of this world. And so it grieves your spirit. And once you, are, once you are positioned with fasting and prayer, this is when the weeping and mourning comes because your spirit is now grieved. Because your spirit has grieved the Holy Spirit. When, when we start kind of getting distracted and pulled over this way or that way towards things of the world instead of towards God and the Holy Spirit, it grieves the Holy Spirit. In Psalm 69, 10, it says, When I wept and humbled my soul with fasting, it became my reproach. My reproach is basically my disapproval. And that's where your spirit and your soul don't really get along. <laughs> this is why the Bible tells us to be led by the Spirit not by our soul. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. 
And while we are creating God's image in our mind, our will and our emotions serve their purpose. Their purpose is not to drag us around. We're not to be drug around by anything but the Spirit of God, led of the Spirit of God. Now in Ezra chapter 8, verse 23, it says, So we fasted, and we implored the God, our God, for this, and he listened to our entreaty. This is where the Jews were returning to Jerusalem after they had been captivated in Babylon. And they, Ezra called this corporate fast, like we're doing now. And he petitioned God basically for their provision. And you don't have to petition God through a fast for the same things every time. It's really whenever you've kind of gotten off the path or maybe you're making a, a drastic life decision or um, you've got a marital problem or a financial problem or something is happening that doesn't really line up with what you believe God has for your life. Okay, and just like in Joel chapter 2, he says, Return to me with all of your heart through fasting, through weeping, and through mourning. So hear what he's saying, return to me. The Lord said that, return to me. So you can do this throughout the year. You don't have to just fast at the beginning of the year. I fast regularly. And I want to encourage those who call themselves followers of Christ. Fasting should be a regular part of your lifestyle. You should be regularly fasting, tithing, giving, praying. These are foundational principles of following Christ. And if you're in ministry, like I am in ministry, fasting needs to be amped up because we'll never see the fullness of what God has for us if we're not fasting. You're not going to see the miracles, signs, and wonders if you're not regularly fasting. So ask God how he would have you participate and I just want to encourage you that, again, this is not a diet. If you are just going to try to lose five pounds, don't even bother, okay? The purpose of fasting is for a spiritual purpose. You are sacrificing food for a spiritual purpose. And that spiritual purpose is to draw near to Christ. The way that you draw near to him is through fasting, prayer, and reading his word. So maybe you're fasting while you're at work. You know, I'm going to be doing that while we go to work. You fast and you get alone at your lunch break and you pray and you read God's word. And in the morning, maybe you get up an extra half an hour and you pray and you read God's word. And at night, maybe you pray an extra half an hour or an hour or whatever your normal time is. Just amp it up. Really press into God and ask Him what He has for you for this new year, this 2022 year. And you will be surprised at how fasting literally plucks out unbelief from your life. It goes down to the root of all of these these things in your life that have caused unbelief. And that is what I believe in Joel chapter 2 verse 12 is saying. With, Come to me, return to me with fasting, with weeping and mourning. Because these things that need to be plucked out, those unbelief issues, that's what keeps us from Christ. Because we don't believe in a certain area and or someone tells us something and we believe that or we have some old traditional thing that we've hung on to that causes unbelief. And fasting positions you to pluck that unbelief out of your heart. So powerful so I'm encouraging you and inviting you we're gonna start on January 11 and we're gonna go 21 days so it's through the end of the month and we are going to see what we are believing for the Bible says be it unto you according to your faith and that's one of the scriptures that I like to pray while fasting Lord be it done unto me according to my faith that God's word never returns void. It's such a powerful time. I look forward to times of prayer and fasting because I have so many testimonies of what God has revealed to me during prayer and fasting. So 
please join. Ask God how you could join. Maybe it's one meal a day. Maybe it's twice a day. Maybe you're, you fast only once a week. Whatever it is, get on board and join this corporate fast. So thank you for doing that. And if you don't even know Christ today, I want to give you an opportunity. The Bible says that we have all sinned. We've all fallen short of God's glory. And the wages of our sin is death. But those who call upon the name of Jesus Christ will be saved. And if you're living your life and it's not happy, and I mean, you know you're not walking with Christ, and maybe for some of you, you've turned away from Christ. Today is your day to give Jesus Christ rule and reign over your life. So whether you've backslidden or whether you've never known Christ as your Lord and Savior, just invite him into your heart. Just repeat after me. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Give me a new life. I'm telling you, you don't have to be fancy with Christ. You just have to be real and raw, authentic. He sees your heart anyway. And if you made that decision, I want to say thank you and congratulate you. And I want to pray for you. Thank you for stepping across that threshold, which is courageous in and of itself because the world is all straight going to hell. It's so easy to go into hell, so easy, but it takes a stern discipline and a, a, a decision within your spirit, man, to follow Christ every day of your life. So good job on doing that. And I want to say thank you to those who always watch these videos and share these videos. Thank you, thank you. Share this video so someone can be encouraged and people can join us for 2022, our 21-day fast. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. Thank you for following me on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, MeWe. Click in the link below to support this ministry. You can do it uh, through our PayPal, our cash app on my Facebook page, or you can click the link that's down below to purchase merchandise for the, there's sweatshirts and there's leggings, there's t-shirts, there's all kinds of stuff. You can support this ministry in that way. Thank you for doing that. And I'll see you guys on my next